Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us, and welcome to the Bob Simmons Show. The Cowboys opened conference play last weekend on the road in Irving, Texas, the home of the Dallas Cowboys, where they faced off against the Texas Tech Red Raiders. This weekend, the boys are back home playing host to the intrastate rival Tulsa Golden Hurricane. And with me, of course, each and every week, the head coach of Cowboy football, Bob Simmons. And, and coach, here we are three weeks into the 1996 yeah. football <clears throat> season. How would you evaluate the team at this point in time compared with your expectations in the preseason? You know, obviously, Paul, uh, we would have probably liked to start it a little bit faster uh, in terms of uh, really the offense and defense gelling uh, uh, and, and, and playing well. Uh, right now, I think we're a little bit in transition. Uh, only because I think we have enough new faces on defense and new faces on offense that uh, we really haven't clicked like we wanted to click. I, I think the, the key thing, though, is that our attitude is good. I think our, our players understand uh, that if we to become a good football team, we have to eliminate the type of mistakes that we're making. So I think we're making progress. Last year, the, the team did get off to a, a kind, of, kind of a slow start. Actually, I guess the first half of the Wyoming game might have been a low spot, and then they seemed to turn it around and really came on strong the last five or six games of the year. Was there a key or a spark that happened last year? Well, I think uh, one thing that really happened last year is that towards the uh, end of the year that the players really start playing for one another. Uh, they start making plays. They start playing within the concept of our defense. Uh, uh, our quarterback stepped up and made plays. Our running backs, which have been productive all year, start playing. And so it's a collective effort. Uh, and, and right now, you know, we, we may have a breakdown and fundamentally on defense right now. And uh, we got some guys on, on offense who are, are breaking down. And I think in time, though, uh, we're going to be a, a, a good football team. You know, we fans, we show up on Saturdays and, and are there in the stands ready to watch a football game. What all goes on with the coaching staff? How do you go about preparing a game plan each week? Well, you know, uh, and, and I'll be brief because what we do is that we, we actually start on, on Sunday uh, after the game is over, but really watching the film of our opponents uh, Sunday night. We probably work up until about 10, 10.30. Uh, and then we'll come in on Monday at 6 o'clock and uh, we'll go over those game films again and we'll take Monday afternoon to really set our game plan and really uh, go, uh, finish our, our, our last ball game on Monday. And we'll go out Monday and practice for about uh, maybe a half hour and then we'll come back Monday night and meet, put our game plan together. We'll practice Tuesday and Wednesday on some things that we've seen on film. Uh, you know, Thursday and Friday, we'll sort of shut it down a little bit, and on Saturday, we'll play the ball game. Coach, one last quick question. This is probably the first year in a long time that we've had really a legitimate quarterback competition, making all the players uh, perform better. Uh, do any, which of the quarterbacks? Um, does the game plan change? For instance, in week one, we had uh, Tony Jones in the ball game, but he went out in the third or fourth quarter with a knee injury, and then Haluka comes in. Does the game plan plan change depending on which quarterback we have no, in? Or? No, we our system is is really suited for all the quarterbacks. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, you know Tony may run the option a little bit better than Chris, but uh, uh, for Chris to play in our offense, he he has to run the option. Uh, but nothing changes for the quarterbacks that we have. Well, we'll be back to take a look at the highlights. Oklahoma State versus the Texas Tech Red Raiders right after this timeout. Welcome back to the Bob Simmons Show. Coach, there's been a lot of conversation about possibly making the Texas Tech-Oklahoma State game an annual game at Texas Stadium. How was the atmosphere and how was the fan support down there? Uh, you know, Paul, it was good. It, uh, obviously, we, we have a, a great uh, alumni base down there. And, and uh, to my surprise, it was I think we had over 10,000 fans there. Uh, Texas Stadium is a great place to play. And uh, I think Texas Tech really had... Uh, probably uh, about uh, 10,000 or more 15,000 fans and I think it's an excellent place to play and what we're going to do is is really uh, get together with Terry Don and, and some of the other administrators and possibly look at maybe going back down there. Well here we're taking a look at some of the first half highlights. We've got David Thompson with a dive behind right guard and right tackle. It's good to see David getting back over 100 yards. Well again. it's good to see David step up and you know when, when we play a top ranked opponent like Texas Tech uh, you know, David comes to play. He ran hard all night, and I think he gained you know, over 110 yards. But uh, here's a guy that, that really, uh, when he comes to play, he plays hard. He runs through tackles. And as you can see here, it's one of his better runs off tackle, breaking tackles. A good back is going to break a lot of tackles here. And this, that's what Dave does well. He'll turn the corner. He'll stay in bounds. He'll do anything to get uh, plus yardage. Well, this weekend, David had his 13th career 100-yard game as an Oklahoma State tailback. He, he 
It moved up to number five on the all-time rushing list, just under 3,000 yards, about 600 yards from one of my contemporaries. He'll be passing Ernest Anderson in uh, hopefully six Pretty more sure games. <laughs> well, you, you, know, I, you know, I tell you, Dave is just getting started. And, uh, you know, I, I expect as we get better on offense uh, up front, uh, Dave is going to have several more 100-yard games, and uh, he played well. Uh, you know, Andre uh, Richardson also played well. I, I think we still have two of the better backs in this conference. No doubt, a tremendous one-two punch. You know, uh, right here we see Andre Richardson, now that you speak of him, running the option here with Haluka. Yeah, I think he's, uh, uh, he's a sensational young man, and uh, we're asking Andre really to, to, to do a lot more this year. Not only play tailback, but uh, you're going to see him in the game at different positions. Uh, it's, it's important for us to get Andre on the field because he is such an explosive player, uh, and when he gets the ball in the hands, he, he makes a lot of things happen. Would you critique the differences between the uh, between Andre's style of running the football and, and David Thompson's style? Well, you know, Andre's probably a little bit flashy. Uh, he has got a lot of quickness, quick moves, where I, I think David is a little bit the same way, but brings a little bit more power in his punch to the game. Uh, but uh, both back style are, are an excellent, and uh, both backs are excellent backs. I tell you, as an offensive lineman, I really do appreciate the way these guys can, can read the holes and, and be able to break it back to the back side. Sometimes the play might be caused around left tackle, and they might break it back off a right tackle because of their great vision. That just, is that something that really can't be taught to something that no, they're that's, with? No, that's instinctive. And the, the other thing that good backs do, what you just saw right there, is where they run through tackles. And Andre shows you that... Uh, He's a heck of a back, and he's a guy that, that can run over and around people. You know, Alonzo came back this week, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I think he made his uh, presence felt. He, he really uh, caught two balls in the ball game and, and had a decent blocking game, but he's a big target. He's a guy that we're going to have to get going, and uh, I think uh, as we get better, uh, Alonzo is really going to play an important part in our offense. Well, he's six foot six, 260 pounds. He had two receptions for 45 yards. The coach, did he draw a lot of attention from their secondary? <laughs> well, he did. <laughs> I think a couple of times we looked for him and they had about three or four people around him. So people noticed him. You know, uh, Chris uh, really made some key throws in that ball game. Here, here's a nice a seven route to Alonzo, put a nice touch on it. Uh, for, for his being his first ball game, he did some real key things in that game. Well, that was a 32 yard completion to Alonzo. And Right here, I think we're going to see a replay of that. Under pressure, you know, Haluka really held up right there, uh, real well right there, kept his composure and made a nice touch pass. Well, you know, he's a young man, I think, that has a real, uh, has a great future here. And, and uh, I think the, the more experience he gets, he's going to be a better player. You can see him just step around and make people miss and, and really throw a nice pass to Sean Love. Uh, the, the one key thing about our passing game is that our young receivers right now, I think, are starting to come around, starting to show up and, and make key plays. And you can see here, uh, I think that's Sean. Uh, that, oh, that's, uh, that's Terrence. Terrence Richardson. Uh, really uh, made an excellent play going up and then uh, uh, running for, for positive yardage. And here, I think we're going to get a look at the defense. And I believe he's a freshman. Porter came in and makes a nice stop here on hands part. Well, you know, uh, we always thought Alvin Porter uh, was a kid that uh, will come in and play early. Uh, I think he was a 21 uh, uh, flat in, in high school in, in track and uh, very fast, very active. He does a good job on our special teams and this is his hometown and since we wasn't red shirt, he gave him an opportunity to make some plays. All right here we see good pressure and a sack with Waddle and Grossfield on uh, Zebby Lethridge. Well, you know, Zephy, uh, we really tried to contain him and I really thought we did a good job for the most part containing Zephy. Uh, and Waddle has really stepped up his game. He's a young man that played as a freshman last year and, and really was in competition this spring. And uh, uh, he's grown a little bit and he's starting to make plays. And it's important when you play that defensive end position to put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Shows a lot of excitement there. Well, Coach, right now Texas Tech is in the history books. Are there any similarities in the type of offense that they run and what we'll see this week at Tulsa? Well, I, I think they're two completely different kind of teams. I think they, they both will probably run the option as far as similarity, but uh, similarities, I say the word. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I think both the quarterbacks are, are, are very uh, similar. There you go. And, uh, and uh, uh, Degar and, and uh, uh, Zephy Leffert, mm -hmm. yeah. We'll be back with this week's Two Minute Drill after this timeout. Welcome back to the Bob Simmons Show. Each week, Tom Dorado takes us behind the scenes to meet some of the players on OSU's football team. This week, we'll get to meet a fifth-year senior and team captain making his 20th consecutive start for the Cowboys. Trent Fisher on TD's Two Minute Drill. <laughs> Uh, 
I wasn't really widely recruited out of high school. I think Oklahoma State was really the only school that was really interested in me as a player, as a person. And uh, when I came here, I felt very confident in them, uh, believing in my talents and believing in me. So uh, I guess I just, uh, I took what they gave me and I gave it back to them. I gave them all I had and, and worked hard at it. And whatever position I ended up at, like DB, uh, I worked hard at it and uh, did the best I can. And it's turned out pretty good for me right now. I got shuffled around a lot when I came in, and I wasn't really sure if I was going to be able to play or not here. I was kind of undersized and maybe not as strong as the other guys and the other DBs, but uh, um, I'll tell you what, I, I worked hard, and, and, uh, and good things happen if you work hard, uh, stay in school, do your things right, and, and good things will happen to you. So that, that's kind of what's happened to me, I think. I, I put in a lot of work and a lot of hard work, and, and uh, Oklahoma State's rewarded me with a lot of opportunities. The coaches here, the tradition, uh, when I was coming out of high school was good. And uh, they were really the only school that wanted me anyway. And uh, I kind of developed into an OSU fan after uh, the 80s when Barry Sanders and, and, and uh, Thurman Thomas and Mike Gundy and those guys were here. I kind of started to like OSU and uh, I like what OSU stood for and uh, made a decision to come here and play football for Oklahoma State. The Big 12's coming about and, and we're the first team uh, to go into the Big 12 and try to make an impact in the Big 12. And uh, we're doing the best we can, you know, and, and if things don't always work out like you want them to, but I tell you what, uh, Coach Simmons and his staff and, and the players that he's brought in here really believe into what he's saying and believe in, in OSU. And uh, I think uh, when people believe in something and people really dedicate uh, their life and their, and their efforts to, to make something happen, I think good things will happen. I was really thrilled and honored that my teammates selected me as, as captain of this football team. Uh, I've been through a lot up here and, and I've, I've stuck it out through the hard times. This is my fifth year here and uh, it really means a lot to me to know that my teammates uh, uh, respect me as a player and as a person to elect me captain. That's, uh, that's a big honor for someone and like David too, that's a big honor for him and me. And uh, now we have to go out and show leadership for this team and, and, and uh, push this team above and beyond what it's capable of doing. I'm going to go out and, and do the best I can. I've got a business degree right now, and I'm working on that. Uh, I've got like 12 hours left after this semester. So uh, hopefully something in the business world or something. If things don't work out, I guess I'll just be a bass fisherman. You know, Paul, uh, Trent is probably the, the few of the fifth-year seniors that we have, and uh, he's done an excellent job. He's been a stabilizing, stabilizing force in that defense, and uh, uh, so much so that, as he said, he got elected captain this year by the defensive unit, which really is an honor for him. Well, I remember when Trent was a quarterback at Putnam City North. It's been fun watching him mature and progress as a player here at Oklahoma State. Well, Coach, here we are. The Big 12 Conference is in full swing. We're into our third week of the conference, and uh, Nebraska has the week off, but we do have some pretty heavy-duty matchups this week. First of all, I know that Colorado, well, of course, the most important game, that's right, Oklahoma Tulsa. State playing host to Tulsa, and of course, that's going to be huge. Cincinnati at Kansas State, and a game I'm looking forward to watching before we head down to Stillwater. It's the Colorado-Michigan game. Coach, yeah, what's I your slant you that, on that's that? That's going to be an exciting ball game. Uh, Michigan is a team that's really changed. Uh, Les Miles is on my staff. He's already bet that Michigan's going to win. Two guys on the staff bet that Colorado's going to win. I can't tell you which two is that. <laughs> well, Colorado <laughs> scores a lot of points, but they gave up a lot this last weekend. we got interstate rivalry here. Yeah. Iowa State at Iowa and Memphis will be uh, playing at Missouri. And Missouri had a pretty good first half uh, against A&M a couple of weeks ago. And we've got A&M at Southwest Louisiana. And an interesting game, which you didn't think was going to be an interesting game. Kansas at TCU. And yeah, TCU it, it, played really well last week. I tell you, it will be because uh, uh, TCU went, went into Kansas last year, and Kansas beat them pretty good. Now Kansas is going into TCU. TCU just come off of a big victory at Oklahoma, so that's going to be an interesting ball game. And TCU no doubt has their confidence flowing yes, after yes, going to uh, Norman, Oklahoma, and coming away with a win. Well, we'll be back to take a look at the next week's matchup, Oklahoma State versus the Tulsa Golden Hurricane, right after this timeout. Welcome back to the Bob Simmons Show. Well, this weekend, the Tulsa Golden Hurricane traveled to Stillwater to take on the Cowboys. And what's well, not a, a grudge match, but it's turned into quite an interstate rivalry each and every year, Coach. This one seems to go down to the wire. What, uh, what's your take after reviewing some of the films and taking a look at Tulsa? Well, you know, uh, Tulsa is a ball club that really came out and played SMU and, and really played them tough. I think the, the final score was 17 to 10. Uh, I think both defenses actually really played well. 
Uh, they're a team that uh, really likes to run the football. Uh, uh, Dave Ray has really done a, a good job over there. And, and uh, like you said, it's, it's a game that's right down the, down the street from us. Uh, we're we're going to have a, a lot of players who really know the, know the Tulsa players, and it's going to be an emotional ball game. Well, after the opening week, I know everybody was probably overlooking Tulsa a little bit when they lost to SMU, but SMU's turned into quite a – it looks like they're going to have quite a season after traveling well, to Fayetteville and beating Arkansas. You know, uh, SMU is a program that's been down for the last four years, but the coach down there has done a good job of recruiting and getting some players in there. And uh, uh, he, he's actually turned that program around to, to go down to Arkansas and beat Arkansas and Fayetteville, something special. That's quite a task. Don't want to bring back any bad memories, but last year's football game, the first three and a half quarters were just outstanding execution. From watching last year's game film, what have the players been able, have they been motivated or have they been able to learn from some of the mistakes there in the final quarter? Or? Well, the, the biggest thing about last year's games that we learned is that you have to play all four quarters. Mm -hmm. I think the players understood that we were in control of that game uh, for about three and a half quarters. And then when the momentum changed, uh, we couldn't uh, make big plays. And that's what it boiled down to is that uh, somebody had to step up and, and, and make a play. We didn't do it, Tulsa did it. Uh, unfortunately, Tulsa won the game, but I think it was a lesson learned because we came back during the course of the season mm -hmm. and really had that same scenario towards the end of, of our last ball game with Hawaii and really and stepped up and make a play. And so uh, I expect an exciting ball game with, with Tulsa. Well, this year we've got, of course, a former Tulsa coach, Ron Calcagni, uh, coaching our QBs. Uh, will their offense change at all now that Calcagni's out of the mix? And, and also, have we been able to beat him up and get all of his trade <laughs> secrets from Tulsa? <laughs> well, you know, uh, Ron is an excellent quarterback coach. We were fortunate to really hire him from them. And uh, he gave us all their secrets. So, I want, you know, I, I want Ready to know that we got all the playbooks, all the, the checks and everything. <laughs> He's going to be changing his signs and everything. They're even going to be lining up in the huddle differently. Well, I know one thing that is on everybody's mind. Uh, of course, Tony Jones hurt his knee late in the game against Southwest Missouri State. He wound up sitting out last week. Uh, how has he progressed coming back? Is he wearing a brace? or, or how, how, What kind of progress and do we, well, show, should we expect to see him on Saturday? Yeah, you know, uh, Tony's going to play Saturday. Number one, he's from Tulsa. Uh, number two, uh, I think he's, he's uh, healthy. Uh, he, he practiced this week. Uh, really, uh, went, Tuesday was very tentative. Uh, Wednesday, but today, uh, was, was a strong practice for him, and I'm looking for him to be, be the quarterback this, uh, this Saturday. Any other injuries of note uh, coming out of last week's ball game against Tech? No, I, you know, I, I think we're pretty healthy. Uh, Henson is a young man that really had a, an ankle coming out of that Tech game, and uh, he got bumped up a little bit uh, on Wednesday, but I expect him to, to start for us. Well, we've had seen some freshmen in the lineup, especially in the defensive line. Uh, will there be any changes in the looks that we present against Tulsa as far as personnel goes, or are we going to be basically the same as what we've had the last Well, you know, we, we're going to play the wide tackle six in this ball game. Uh, uh, we've talked now, about Now, wide tackle the, six, explain that to well, well, what we're going to do is we're going to bring all 11 guys up and play on the line. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think what we got to do is really stick with our system. I think that uh, uh, Tulsa prevents some problems for us with the quarterback, and he's a guy that's very, very active. Uh, and so we have to be aware of which quarterbacks in the ball game, DeGar versus Fitzgerald, because I think they're two different styles of quarterbacks. They got some good backs back there. Uh, you know, Reggie Williams is a kid that they think is an excellent back, and uh, he's going to play a lot for them. So uh, I think we're going to have an excellent game plan now. It's up to us to go out and, and execute that game plan. Coach, this doesn't necessarily have to do with the upcoming game, but just uh, the team in general. There was a lot of talk in the preseason about us going to two or co having co-defensive coordinators. Can you tell us how does that system work and, and really what goes on between the two and, and during the week of practice and during the football game? Well, you know, what we have is, is really uh, uh, Johnny Byer who coordinates the running game and that's the front seven and uh, Johnny Burnett, the JB brothers who coordinate the passing game and I got a lot of respect for both those coaches, both their knowledge. Uh, I think uh, it, it really lets Johnny go ahead and that's bar, mm -hmm. concentrate, <laughs> <laughs> concentrate on, on the run and, and lets uh, Burnett uh, and uh, do his job back there the second day. They both have to work together. Uh, it is important that the both men have done that, they've done that in the past uh, and when it comes down to probably over the, making a, a big decision. Uh, Johnny Barr has that authority to, to really make that decision, but uh, it really takes the pressure off of one guy where both guys share the responsibility. Well, Coach, thanks so much for your insight. I know we're all looking forward to 6 p.m. kickoff versus the Tulsa Golden Hurricane at Lewis Stadium. Folks, you won't want to miss it. We look forward to seeing you again here next week on the Bob Simmons Show.